So I guess we're going to use this in a sense of uh, telling a, a story of sorts. Uh, I guess once upon a time, there was this sense of this fictional community. Some called it Camelot. Some, in the frame of reference while I've lived here, having been raised here from practically birth, was that Madison was such a city. That city on the hill, the shining utopian city, where only good things happen. Where only good outcomes were the norm of the day. And frankly, that city was fictitious. And that illusion of Madison today in 2016 is also a legal fiction of sorts. And it's not with any sense or measure of joy that I take when I describe a story that I think most of Madison has to come to terms with. So it's 6.24 p.m on a weeknight in an area of high traffic, high volume pedestrian density. People come and go, as do these people, probably had to get gas, milk, bread. So what do we do? What do all of us do? We go to the market. Where can we get a twofer? Well, I'll go to a convenience market where I can get gas and those staples and head on home. It's at 624 in the middle of the evening, people still coming home from work, raw daylight for another hour and a half, eight lanes of traffic cascading around them, cars parked in and about the gas carousels, and what do we have? We have a guy in his car, summarily executed and oblivious to the fact that there are cars parked adjacent, one side or the other, occupied cars, cars with kids, people going in and out of the market sense of the convenience store to get those staples at 624 in broad daylight in an area of town that has prolific human and vehicular traffic. It is nothing short of miraculous that unintended third-party innocent people weren't slain in the midst of this. Literally, you know, the caliber of weapon and ammunition used was a 9mm. Now, I'm not into gun, ballistics, velocity, range, trajectory, and all that crap. I'm just going to let you know for one thing, is that a bullet shot out of a gun, left unfettered with nothing in its way, of that make and model, could probably go a mile to a mile and a half before gravity or else brings it down. We're living in a dense urban population with things that can get in the way of those bullets. Ricochet, or people, or people. Everybody says, you know, this, this stuff only happens in Milwaukee, this only happens in Chicago. We're not like those guys. So let's go back to our normal way of life and continue to discount and rationalize that these are anomalies here in Madison. This doesn't play out in our community. Those are just imported problems from Chicago or Milwaukee. That can't happen in Madison. Well, it has happened in Madison yet again with all too much recurring frequency. This marks at least since the first of the year, this has been 35 separate incidents, besides this homicide, 35 separate incidents of shots fired. And no, folks, it doesn't only happen on the south side. It happens on the west side, the north side, downtown, east side. No district has been given immunity from this sort of gun violence. So the reason I'm late today is that part of this young man's family wanted to meet with me 
And quite frankly, given the opportunity to pay my condolences with them or meet my commitment with you, you came in a distant second. Uh, they are hurting. They are perplexed. They are confused. They are mourning. They are grief-stricken. And yet, and yet, to their incredible faith in a higher supreme God or being, they are asking me, imploring me, to use my resources to whatever extent we possibly can to put an end to the violence. I did not meet with a family hell-bent on an eye for an eye and revenge. Quite the contrary. They're angry, they're upset, they're grief-stricken, but in the midst of that, they cling to a faith life which says that they don't want this same tragic outcome manifesting itself on any more families. There has been, as we know, a nexus, a link, some sort of ongoing relationship between the victims at O'Grady's and this victim. So we would obviously be remiss if we weren't looking at what that means to our operational theory now with both homicides. If left to my own devices, I guess I would have to say I'm concerned about the continued escalation and the possibility or potential of retaliation. This is the second event in a little over two weeks. Where will it end? Who from among us, from our community, will come forward, provide us tangible information, information that we can corroborate and use in our criminal justice system to provide the legal impetus to take these folks off the streets. I'm challenging our community. I'm challenging everybody who has a stake in Madison, which is all of us, that we have to put aside whatever our personal concerns of self-sacrifice are and think about what's in the best interest of the better part of Madison. Someone has to have the capacity to come forward, even if anonymously, in order for us to put an end to this spiraling cycle. Self-help mechanisms don't work. It just keeps jacking up the score. And we need to make that message concrete and real. But people aren't going to believe the police unless they see people getting arrested and taken off the streets. We can't arrest and take people off the streets because somebody said somebody said to somebody that this guy was good for it. It's called hearsay. We need to have people stand up and at least give us enough information that we can run with to corroborate and create those legal burdens that we can bring people in off the streets. I have to take issue with those who say that uh, as chief of police that I have been partial to fear-mongering. And to those who would contend that, I would give you every opportunity to do as I have and my officers and detectives have to meet with these families. I dare you and have those conversations and see if they think that we in Madison are minimizing problems. I'll bet you that you're going to get an argument from them as well. So we can blithely chalk this up to yet another anomaly, another exception, another mechanism in which <coughs> Chief Koval is fear-mongering, or we can use this as an introspective moment to recognize that we're already at five homicides, which exceeds last year at the pace we're going at. Um, I shudder to think of what 
the year's end outcome is going to be unless or until we get some help. The police, as I've said time and time again, cannot go this road alone. We cannot blanket and preserve everybody's safety 24-7. You have to help us help everyone else out. And in only that sense can we try to create at least some measure of a truce here and put uh, some of this gun violence right back on its head. So that's basically a sad story of a city who thought it was Camelot and then had to get a reality check. Questions for the Chief? Chief, you mentioned uh, some level of potential nexus between Tuesday's homicide and the killing of Martez Moore. I did. Uh, can you explain? Without compromising our investigation and our ongoing interest there, there is no doubt but that both of our victims had at least a sense of familiarity, collegiality, or friendship, however you may want to frame that, but they were certainly conversant with one another, uh, from time to time hung out, and so it's not like uh, the sense of randomness is going to be used as a, a mechanism of attribution here. I obviously believe that we have to be diligent in looking at those connectedness to these two cases because of the fact that the victims knew one another.